I want to welcome everyone to um, the In My Feels podcast. Uh, this is actually my first solo podcast. Um, and I want to dive in on a recent book um, that I've been reading that has, has been mind blowing. Um, and as you guys know, um, I want to thank you guys for, you know, continually listening and supporting and leaving reviews. I'd love to, to, to hear your feedback and any comments you have. Um, as you know, I have a, a, a couple of listeners come on the show and I'd love to invite some more. And any feedback, please, um, I'd love to hear it, you know, send it over to Apple Podcasts. That would be amazing. And as you know, we usually start the show with thoughts, feelings, emotions, you know, conditionings, beliefs, um, negativity, positivity, everything on the inside creates your outside exterior. So I want you guys to really ask yourselves, how am I feeling right now in this moment? And you could take your time with it. I mean... And you can pause the podcast and, and kind of really dive in on how we are feeling because it's detrimental to your experience on the outside. It's the attraction, the magnet to everything you see in front of you. Um, so it's very important that we kind of acknowledge our feelings and really kind of home in on our conditioning and our habits to our feelings and really put them on a level plateau of, you know, mindfulness and you know, I wouldn't say meditation per se, but the quieting of the mind, as I've previously mentioned in, in, in the shows previously. Um, and the book I want to talk about is actually about Jesus. Um, I'm not religious at, at all. And, and as most of you know who listen, I'm pretty practical in, in, in my spiritual approach. I understand the accountability I have to everything outside of myself is created by me, along with the people I choose to have around me. Um, and I accept that without a shadow of a doubt. There is no, you know, ill feeling or, or I've not been disproved wrong. Um, and, and being practically spiritual, you know, I send testers out into the waters of how I'm feeling at that specific time. And if I see something that resonates to that feeling, I know it, it was an attraction to me just as the good is, the bad and everything else. That's where the accountability factor comes in. Um, and the book I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about is is a book by a guy called Preston Thomas and it's the life and teachings of Jesus but it's solely just the teachings again I'm uh, the religious aspect for me kind of dilutes the spiritual proudness of 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 the kind of the core teachings of spiritualism and everything else whether it's Buddhism or Mohammedism or any of any of the other religions it's always misconstrued I feel like it's it's written from a place of somewhat egoness whereas this book um, is solely what Jesus spoke about and solely what he practiced himself. Um, and it was a, it's a great book because, you know, I don't know too much about religion and I want to learn because there's there's messages in there and there's everything else. But I want to take the, the kind of best parts and I felt like this teaching is one of those. So I would highly recommend the book for sure. And the reason why I'm talking about this specific book or Jesus per se is because he, I use him as, as, as an example of someone who's a superior manifester. I mean, I don't think there's anyone on earth who's ever existed in our time that we know about in any of the history books from someone who's had that level of belief in themselves from birth per se. And then, you know, I talk about manifestations all the time, which is everything in your life is a manifestation. So if you're listening on your phone, you manifested that phone. You know, if you if anything in your life, the good, the bad, the ugly, anything that you that you perceive as anything is you. And and Jesus was 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 I wouldn't say he's a master of it because he let go of it. And um, a perfect example, I mean, you know, from birth before he was born, I mean, you know, Mary and Joseph and, you know, Bethlehem and the three kings and all that type of stuff. They prophesize that this baby being born is the son of God. So when Jesus was born, he was told, you are the son of God, and this is exactly who you are and everything else. And, and I know we have, you know, the egotistical kings and throughout history and, you know, who, 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 who proclaim to be gods and all that type of stuff, but their young conditioning and their young minds have never been conditioned to be that. Whereas Jesus was told, you, this is factually, this is who you are, and this is who you're going to be. Um, and in, throughout the book, you know, again, I, I, I touch up on the religious aspects as education, but also as evidence 
that what I am doing and what, you know, I hope everyone who's listening is doing is understanding the power they all possess from the inside to create everything on the outside. And just going to kind of, so I'm going to go into some kind of specifics of, you know, his level of belief of, I, I, and, you know, I always use the connotation of floating on the river, you know, being a hollow bamboo and floating on the river. That's pretty much what Jesus was. And he understood the power he had um, within him and the people around him. So for those of you, of you who don't know, you know, the, the, the kind of story of Jesus and everything else, the book is amazing. It pretty much gives you a backstory. It gives you, a, you know, of him, his sayings and everything else. And, you know, he was a pretty young man when he died, you know, mid thirties and everything else. So he had, he had the youth behind him and he didn't have the conditionings per se of the kind of, I call it adultness of everything else. Um, and he put his absolute trust in into a higher power, whether, you know, that's God or it's the universe or wh whatever you want to call it, you are the channel for that higher power. That's why we have free will. Free will is there for you to, to use as you want to, want to use it. Um, and another example is, you know, Jesus, when he first met his disciples, said, please follow me, leave your shoes, leave your belongings. The, the, the universe or God per se will take care of us. And kind of fast forward onto, you know, just before Jesus was crucified, he sat down, you know, the Last Supper and his conversations with them was, you know, I, you put your trust in me and you put your trust in God. Did you ever want for anything? And they said, no, we didn't. You know, we, we at first, our conditioning was what wasn't allowing our mental beliefs to allow us to, you know, leave our, all our physical possessions and, and put a trust that everything is going to be okay at, but it was, you know, they, they went from place to place and people would house them and feed them and home them and, and you know, take care of them just as Jesus took care of them. But again, no human has ever existed with that level of belief of being the son of God from birth, but also having an open heart. And when you put those, those two uh, together, it becomes an incredible melting pot of everything you see. Um, and, you know, he would go from town to town. And, you know, you have to imagine back in the day, they didn't have phones. There was no, you know, everything was word of mouth. And that's the energy behind it. So anyone who feels like, the, you know, social media and all these type of things, they need it to A, be happy or B, to succeed or any of these type of things. People were doing that before social media. So now we're conditioned to, to think that we do need that to achieve something else. So we have to let go of those conditioning notions of everything we've ever been taught and understand that you just have to let go in order to achieve or to, to attract or feel good. Feeling good actually attracts way quicker than, than, than stressing over it and everything else per se as I used to do. Now I let go. All the notions of how I make money, how money comes to me, how love comes to me, how my family's health is, how any of the things in your life, I've let go of the notion and put my trust in I wouldn't say I specifically put trust in, in, in a God. I put trust in myself and the power that I have. So therefore, I'm trying to become that hollow bamboo floating on a river. And another thing in the book is, you know, Jesus had that level of belief in himself as a person. And he would heal people physically, like the blind. He would make them see, you know, he would... And you can imagine back in the day, I mean, you know, if you had an illness or an ailment, you were considered um, possessed by the devil or you, you sinned in a previous life. So you can imagine the level of, I mean, mental health and anxieties and everything else back then was insane. And Jesus brought a different type of cheat, uh, teaching, a different type of um, energy, a different type of thought system to that process. Um, and he truly believed the power that he had that channeled through him, which he proclaimed, you know, the son of God, his, it was his dad, uh, or the, the father per se. Um, and again, I don't know anyone in history that's had that level of belief. And I know we have, you know, the prophet Muhammad and we have, um, Buddha and all those type of things. But another example of Buddha was, it's this notion of, you know, which I just posted recently, uh, on the Duncan Trussell episode I did for the family hour was, the reason why we feel guilty about being spiritually spiritual and earning money is because Buddha was a rich man growing up and was a king, was a prince, was going to become a king, 
And his dad shielded him from everything, from heartbreak, pain, sorrow, you know, all he had everything he ever wanted, but he was empty inside because as you know, physical things don't bring you that um that emotion, that feeling, that aliveness. Um and you know, he escaped the palace, saw death and hunger and disease and everything else, and it crushed his soul. And he, he was in turmoil for for many, many years. You know, renounced his throne, went out into the world, became, you know, became a beggar, all these type of things that he had to go through in order to cleanse his soul. And he, you know, the way he practiced things was for him to become spiritually enlightened, he had to get rid of physical things, physical things that clouded his mental state, clouded his judgment, clouded all those things. And he got rid of those things. And then obviously after much practice and hard work on working on his mental state, he became enlightened under, you know, meditating under a Bodhi tree. So for him and what worked for him doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for everyone else. And the reason why he could give away everything is because he's, he's always had it. And when you haven't had those type of things, it's very difficult for you to give away when you've had nothing to give away nothing. Um, so again, you're, you, the power we all possess, you as an individual are unique in your manifestations, in your creativity, in your attractions. It's tailor-made for you. You are the creator. You don't have to give. There is no, you know, karmatic, I have to give something to get something. That's not how it works. You know, there's this misconception of karma is what goes around, comes around. That's not how it works. What happens is, you know, I'm driving on a freeway someone cuts me off or whatever and I get angry and then I argue with someone who's next to me they argue with someone else you go home to your kids you start taking out on your all that all the different type of, that is karma it's, it's the trickle on cause and effect of something that you put out that is going to continue on whether it's someone else and everything else and the attraction to it it, it is you you are the power of it so that's why I'm always so and again you know, it's very difficult for someone to become Buddha because you haven't, you're not going to have that life that Buddha's had. It's tailor-made for his experience. So you have to tailor-make parts of that teaching into your life and for how you feel you want it to be. It's the same thing with Jesus. You know, now we have so many distractions and, you know, everyone says, you know, social media causes anxiety and, and depression and all these type of things, which it can but essentially, if you're if you're anxious and depressed while watching it, it's only going to create that, but even more so. So we have to get rid of those notions, those conditionings of what we think things are supposed to be and and, and go within ourselves to to understand that we have that power. Um, and the reason why I did this, this solo episode is because there's so much I want to say. And um, and I feel like this is a great step forward. To people who you know who want to learn, I, I want to learn. I want to grow. I'd love to hear from anyone who's kind of going through anything because I, I think it's super courageous when people reach out to me, which has been the support has been amazing. Um, but again, you know, back to the kind of Jesus philosophy: study people, study people, history of of why they attract the the things they attract. Why is it that you know Jesus, who was the most loving person who ever existed, pretty much um, was crucified? Um, and in the book, you know, he talks about his death. He talks about how he was, he doesn't go into specifics. He just knows that it's going to be a very painful death and that he is going to be fine and he will be back. And again, when you operate at that 0% of no resistance, you become Jesus, you become Christ consciousness. You become that, that, that plateau of everything. That's when an instant thought becomes a reality, becomes a physical manifestation. Um, and, and and again, you know, I ask myself all the time of, of, you know, what do I want? And half the time, I don't specifically know. Um, and, you know, and then people are, that I speak to are always saying, well, the manifestation don't work because I never get what I want. It's, uh, and it's because you're constantly operating from a lack of your, you know, your conversation is I'm a lack of this or this, or I have to pay this bill, or I have to do this, or I have to do that. It's a lack of, it's not an abundance of, that's why we have to change our mental state. Um, but back to kind of the, 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 the Jesus teachings, I mean, what a guy, I mean, I'm again, not religious, not, not Christian, not any of that type of stuff, just what he was teaching 
was was super forward for those times and hence you know the kind of the manifestation of his death and everything else and when he operates at that level of zero percent he knew that he had to die he knew that he had to do those things in order for people in history to understand what he was trying to teach he would walk up to people who were who are blind now you can see and they could see because they had that level of belief in him also and and that level of belief of i can heal myself which we all have the power to do think about the the, the times when you know you have the flu or you're feeling sick and and trace it back to your mental state at that time you know you're feeling run down you're feeling all of these type of things your mind's super busy it's always racing this is where physical manifestations in the body are giving you single signals to change that that approach that way you the way you think the way you feel all those type of things it's a powerful thing there's so much magic in the universe it's marvelous and what i would say is practically study yourself remove yourself from you if you could observe yourself from a third person outside of yourself on your daily thoughts your you know your actions all those type of things you're exactly where you're supposed to be based on those thoughts feelings conditionings beliefs everything in your life has led you to where you are right now so how can you be mad at that and that's where the accountability thing comes in because i am fully accountable for everything in my life and, and and not that it creates an ego or a power it actually creates a sense of unknowing but a sense of unknowing in beauty because you start realizing like you d we don't know anything and it's great the unknown used to scare me and now it doesn't because i understand it's magic i can't explain to you how or why i just know that the universe is good and and you know everyone sometimes speaks to me well look at all the atrocities that are going on in the world the universe gives you free will how can that be bad you're born into situations to learn from jesus was born he had a, he he had an agreement to come back at, in a specific situation with the powers that be with himself or whoever and he decided to be born at that time at that moment uh, with those surrounding beliefs you are the son of god and everything else to learn nothing is predetermined in terms of, i can't you know you can't come back and say well i'm going to be you know the president of the united states when i come back well you can't have those pre-existing conditions before birth but you have the learning ability at birth and it's up to you then free will to get yourself out of any situation that you want to um but again you know he would heal the blind and i i I don't know anyone in recorded history, please feedback, let me know, of anyone that has brought anyone back from the dead. And I know in this book, he, he, there's a couple of occasions of people that Jesus loved and he brought them back. They were, I don't know if back then they may have been in like deep coma and everything else or, you know, but the minute that Jesus went there or set an intention and touched them, they woke up because he had no resistance to the way he felt, no resistance to his physical manifestation no resistance to his thoughts and you know how many of us have resistance to anything you know waking up going to sleep going to work how many of us go to work and complain that it's monday that's a lack of energy it's a lack of um uh manifestation towards the work is it's you doing the opposite of the things you want and attracting the things you don't want which you're going to see more of um and, you know, he, he, and in this book, you know, he speaks about, you know, prayer, which is, you know, my connotation of prayer is meditation, you know, it's taking five to 10 minutes a day and getting your mind right. And, and it takes work. Like it's not easy. Um, and that's the thing where the creatures of habit come in of the conditioning. We're conditioned to feel like shit. So therefore it, it becomes a norm for us. And when we don't feel like shit, it feels weird to us. And we complain about that. We're not feeling shit. And it's a never-ending cycle. We have to break that cycle. It can take up to, you know, 100 days of trying to force yourself to feel good. Again, practically, we have to put in the work. And that's exactly what I do. Um, and I wish I knew this shit when I was younger, even though I probably wouldn't have listened, um, to be honest with you. But Jesus had this distinct trust, this distinct, you know, abundance of love to give. So therefore, the love energy flowed through him. Um, and I'm trying to get to that point of view, trying to get to that that plateau level 
you know, of that 0%, almost, you know, the wind comes and you're, you, you fly off into it. Um, I know it sounds all theoretical and stuff, but I'm just trying to give you connotations of, of how we can all be and the, the, the people we can be and the movement that we can create spiritually and practically too. Because um, I'm, I'm someone who is very practical and spiritual, but I understand that for me, you know, money is freedom. Money is freedom to spend time with my family, is to enjoy things, is to give to others, is to, you know, to love, to, to abundance of every type of thing. And I understand that. So, you know, it's the free will factor to it. And I'm saying anyone can achieve anything they ever want if they let go of how they think that they're going to achieve it. Because the how is the, is the distraction from, from the doing. And, and another thing too, I mean, for those times, I mean, you know, people would get stoned to death for pretty much nothing um, if you had an illness or an ailment. But, but Jesus would pick those people up from the floor um, cause he had that level of love and that, you know, again, I don't know anyone who's had that level of belief and that notion of, you know, I am all powerful. I am all knowing. I am a healer. I am, you know, this soup, 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 you know, I'm no better than anyone else. Um, we are all the same, but yet had the, 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 that level of belief in himself. It's a beautiful thing. Um, you know, I wish I could say I'm I'm there. I'm probably like one percent there, to be honest with you. Um, but it's but it's a great place to aim for, you know, is that to be better and to but it's not just to be better because you know everyone's trying to do that. It's to know yourself and know that the 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 the, pe- the feelings that you have and the the thought processes that that you have and your conditionings that you have drive everything you see in physical reality. It's it's a marvelous thing. It can be a scary thing at first. Because every, you know, when I first started doing this practice and this kind of lifestyle, should I say, I would, I would get scared of every time I had a negative thought, but it's not the individual negative thoughts that bring things to you. It's the, it's the accumulation of them. So when I used to think negatively at, on a consistent level every day for, you know, three, four months or most of my life, I would always attract situations that would make me feel the same the same shitty way I felt until I said no more. I can't do it anymore. Then I started telling myself, you are, you're good. This is okay. You're healthy. You're alive. The appreciation factor, naming things that you have, whether it's water, you know, clothes on your back, you know, you know, anything, finding that, that meaning in that something kind of brought that, that one or two positive things into my life. And then from that, I built on that. That's great one or two things great next day i'm going to say two to four things that i like about myself or i'm that i'm okay with with myself and then from the next day on to that maybe two to six things and from that maybe six to eight things and then it becomes a habit and then you become a, you become the creature of habit of telling yourself positive things rather than telling yourself negative things or thinking negatively about yourself um you know i always whenever i feel shitty on a day i'm just like wow you're alive and then it kind of just halts everything and it steps being like, well, you know, some people aren't. But I also know that we live many lives. So it's not death isn't final. You know, this is this is an adventure. This is something that we need to experience. And clearly in non-physical form or, you know, in, in, in not being alive, the reason why we come alive is to feel, is to really feel physical things. Um, and what makes us feel worse is that we fight against those feelings instead of acknowledging them or speaking about them. And anyone who, who feels like they can't speak to anyone, please reach out to me. Everyone knows um, who follows me that, I, you know, I reply to pretty much everyone. You know, people come on the show, we talk about it, we talk about our feelings, our emotions. Um, and I think that's the reason why my mind is so quiet most of the time, because I'm constantly speaking my mind. Um, what's on my mind to a point where my mind's like, you know, I want to be quiet now. <laughs> Um, and it's not easy. I'm t- like, it's not an easy, not an easy fix things. Uh, and I feel like, you know, social media and everything's so instant now, but, but conditioning our feelings can't be instant. It can't be, you know, a Netflix show you switch on and off is something that you work on, you practice on, it becomes a way of life and it's enjoyable. I mean, you know, if you can make yourself feel good for one day of the month, I guarantee you, you'll, you, you'll work on that and it will come two days and then three days and then four days. 
And then once a negative thing comes in, you'll brush it off because you, you, you're, you're used to feeling good. So when something negative comes in, you're, it's okay. I know how to handle this. Whereas the opposite used to be true for me is, you know, it'd be negative, ne- negative, negative. And then the positive thing will come in and, I, and it would scare me because it doesn't feel right. But we can change that. Um, so yeah, the, I mean, the books, The Life and Teachings of Jesus by Preston Thomas is, it's a great book. And those who, you know, it's, there, it's not the, the kind of religious connotations. There's, there isn't really any of that. It's basically what Jesus said during the time that he was alive and what he stood for. You know, everything that he loved, the people around him, his disciples, the followers, um, you know, he predicted his life, he predicted his death. He knew before he, that last supper, he knew that he was going to be taken away and he's going to suffer a horrendous death and that he, he's going to be back. He's going to resurrect and he's going to, he's going to show himself to certain people and everything else. It's a phenomenal book. And I suggest anyone who's kind of looking for that higher learning or the history books per se, you know, they're written for a reason. Whether or not you, you like them or not, um, I feel like we should always touch up on our education behind them, or at least, the, you know, the, the precipice behind them. Um, and and he, he, he literally manifested everything in his life, and he was so powerful at it. So powerful, in fact, that he manifested being crucified, you know, for our sins per se, um, which, which is an in, incredible, I mean, like, that level of belief that he had, I feel like we can all achieve that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep dropping these kind of, you know, I'm reading a couple of other books, one on reincarnation, and I'm starting another one called Book of Miracles. Oh, and I feel like I just need to, you know, give my recommendations and, 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 and you know, for those who, who, who want to kind of read and everything else and educate themselves, because education is free, you know. It's great to expand your mind, and I feel like that's why we're here, to learn, to learn about ourselves and everything else. Um, so again, I want to thank you guys for, for joining me on this kind of solo vibe. Um, and please leave me any, you know, comments, reviews, anything. And I'd love to invite some more, some more of you on the show. Appreciate it.